better than 100% of Aurelia players in Challenger. You guys are not ready for today's video. No, I can promise you, you are not ready for today's video because I'm quickly going to explain what happened. Just quickly, and you, you shouldn't skip this part. So, as you guys may know, I'm really, I never was good at Irelia, right? I always told you guys I'm struggling with learning this champion. And I had played a few games of Irelia, but I never, never got even close to the point of me wanting to make the video. So, I got into a draft, and, and our, mid, uh, our support, no, our dragon laner, picked Soraka and picked Smite. And he literally said, I am gonna troll. He did troll the entire game, okay? So, I was like, okay, you know what? This is going to be one of those games where I'm going to just pick Aurelia and learn. I picked Aurelia. And what, what can I say? It felt like there was some sort of light shining on top of me. Because I played like an absolute madman. I landed every combo. One after the other. Combos that I had never even done before. I have no idea what happened. Honestly, it was a miracle. Like, this video is genuinely a miracle. It was as if something wanted this video to happen. I, I, I cannot explain how. I am sure that if I went into another game with Aurelia, I would never ever play like that game ever again. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but you just have to watch this video. You just have to watch it. There are timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay. So let me tell you now how to build Aurelia. Um, basically, this is the build. There is one big change which is either Divine Sunderer or Trinity Force. Are you up against tanks? You go for Divine Sunderer. Are you up against squishies? You go Trinity Force. First item is going to be a Blade of the Rune King. Always. This is a core item on Irelia. It works really well. Her first ability procs on hit effects. So Blade of the Rune King is amazing. So Blade of the Rune King first. After that, you get tier 1 boots. And then, as I said, either a Trinity Force or a Divine Sunderer. If you are up against a heavy AP composition, you can actually get Wits and second item. It is worth it because it gives you the defense... Sure, you're not going to do as much burst damage because Divine Sunder and Trinity Force give you more burst damage because of the Sheen proc. But Wits End is worth it. For example, if you're playing Baron Lane against an Akali and the enemy jungler is an Evelyn, for example, right? So the Baron Laner and their jungler is AP and you are playing in the Baron Lane. It is totally worth to go Wits End second. Hell, you could even get it first. But I, as I said, I do recommend you get Blade of the King first because it's such a core item. But you can get Wits End like... First, but guaranteed second if you're up against that kind of AP matchup, right? If you're not, as I said, Blade of the Rune King, then Divine Sunder Trinity Force, and then the Wits End. Are you up against like a heavy AD composition? You can skip out the Wits End and go for the Death's Dance instead. Death's Dance third item, and then fourth item again. If you are not dealing with any AP, you go for the Guardian Angel. But then as your last item, still get the Wits End. Because Wits End is just so unbelievably good on Aurelia. Reason being is because any item that gives you on-hit damage, on-hit, which means every, you know, basic attack or an ability that applies on-hit effects, it gives you damage. Those are the types of items you want on Aurelia. And Wits End is exactly that type of item. You know, Blade of the Room King is and Wits End is. And of course, also Divine Sunderer because you proc the Sheen all the time. So that's what I mean. Like normally, if the enemy has any type of AP champion that is doing any kind of damage, you want to get Wits End as your third item. Like third item for sure. For the boots, you want to get Mercury Threads or Plated Steel Caps. These are generally going to be the two boots that you want to go for. Glutinous Griefs, I mean, if the enemy has a lot of sustained damage and it's like a mixed damage, you could go for Glutinous Grief if you don't have to deal with CC, because otherwise uh, Mercury Threats, of course. And for your enchantment, Stasis is amazing. You already have your second ability to soak up a lot of damage, but then getting a Stasis is really, really good. You know, for example, if you're up against Pike to block his ultimate, Garen to block his ultimate, you know. QSS can also be good. If you're up against Annie, for example, Annie ults you, you QSS and you instantly ult her back and destroy her. QSS, like, make sure you get QSS in those types of games, right? I guess Morgana, QSS. So, don't forget about QSS. Really, really important, uh, uh, important enchantment for Aurelia. Oh, yeah, and Guardian Angel is always going to be your last item. Keep that in mind. This is always going to be your last item. Make sure you get a Guardian Angel in your build. Incorporate it always. Uh, for the runes, you go for Conqueror and Brutal. This is one of the only champions I would pretty much always run Brutal on. You could argue that Triumph is good, but I, it's just not really worth it. Because Irelia, the thing about Irelia is, your first ability heals you up. So when you kill an enemy, you actually heal yourself up as well with that first ability. Now, of course, Ignite can still kill you off. But the thing about Irelia is, it's not like other champions. Tri like, 
other champions, you know, when you get a kill, Triumph can save your ass. With Irelia, it doesn't, it won't save your ass as often. Your first ability is going to save you. You know, you kill that enemy when you have just one HP with your first ability, boom, it heals you up instantly. That is how Irelia works. And Brutal, the early game damage is amazing, first of all. But then also, like, later on in the game, they buffed Brutal. Don't forget, guys. You know, they buffed this, they buffed this rune. So, just the early game buffing and the mid game buffing as well. Sure, in the late game, you're not going to feel it as much, but every basic attack, every first ability applies brutal. Keep in mind, on hit effects. Very, very good on Irelia. Third one is completely situational, like whatever you need. You know, if you don't know what to go for, you go for the nullifying orb. Um, otherwise, Hunter Titan is great. Adaptive Carapace, meh, because you heal up a lot with Irelia. Keep that in mind all the time. So that's why, you know, if you don't know what to go for, you just go for the nullifying orb. Fourth one is going to be Sweet Tooth. Um, it's just really good to have in lane. And you use up a lot of mana when you're playing Irelia. With that first ability, you're constantly using up a lot of mana. You could go for Nimbus Cloak, but it's not really worth an Irelia because she's already mobile enough. Like, your first ability allows you to dash like crazy. I suppose you could go for Demolish if you're playing her in the Baron lane. But again, Sweet Tooth is generally just going to be better on Irelia. For the spells, you want to go for Ignite and Flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. All right, on to the gameplay. And as I said, this Soraka, I don't know why, but she just trolled the game. Like, she just trolled this game. Like, you'll see what happens. I am playing, like, I was supposed to go mid lane, but this guy, uh, he picks Soraka, goes for smite, and goes to mid lane. So, what I'm gonna do, you know, I don't really care about him trolling. I'm probably, like, I'm gonna abandon this lane. Like, look, he's, he's literally trolling. I'm gonna abandon the mid lane after the first wave and just go to the dragon lane. Because, like, you know, what am I supposed to do in the mid lane with a smite Soraka? She's gonna take all the farm. Like, look, she's gonna smite the minion. So, I realized this doesn't make any sense. I'm just gonna take this lane and then I'm gonna go to the top lane. Because my Yumi is against Draven and Thresh. She's gonna die and we're gonna lose the game. Like, here, you know, look. I realized this doesn't make any sense. I'm just gonna go to top lane. Whatever. Screw you, Soraka. You're trolling. I don't really care. I'm just gonna do my thing. So here... I don't know. Here is where the light turned on. Like, as I said, some it felt like some sort of light shined upon me. Because you guys may not even believe that this is me playing Irelia. That is how unbelievably good I played this game. Let me just say it like that. I'm not gonna say whether or not, you know, it was a win or anything. But just... Just... Just watch. Just watch. Because the combo is like... Okay, so boom, boom. I missed the combo, sure, but these are the types of combos that you can hit on Irelia, you know, it's not, your third ability is not just, you know, using your third ability and trying to stun enemy, you can use your third ability, use that first ability on a minion, and then stun them, I did stun Thresher, boom, this is risky, I have to flash, yeah, so, there's like a ton of different combos, I'm gonna do a lot of them in this game, you'll see, you can also use your third ability, then ult, first ability, another third ability, you know what, I don't even, oh, there you go, I did it, you see? So third ability, I used a minion to get on him, and then I stunned him. This is this is not a simple combo, let me just say it like that. But you can clearly see it pays off. Reason that it pays off is because enemies won't see it coming. Basically, there's like, like um, a range of danger is what I like to call it, right? Like, the enemies are gonna see Irelia here, and they're gonna think like, okay, I can, I can stay up to this far away from Irelia. If I'm here, I am safe. But then you, you use your third ability, and boom, you dash to a minion, now they're in your range of danger. You stun them with the third ability, and boom, you dash to them with your first ability. You see how you can very easily close that gap as an Irelia, and this is also why, if you don't know how to play Irelia, and when you are up against a good Irelia, you constantly feel this helpless feeling of like, how do I deal with this? Here, I hit him again. This was another combo, you see? I actually dashed to the minion, Got him into my line of the uh, into my vision of danger, and um, I stunned him. I just stunned him. It's a little bit harder to hit it like that because you have to use your third ability two times. The, and if you're very new to Irelia, I know this is all gonna sound very complicated, but you have to listen to me, anyways. Um, if you use your third ability before you dash to a minion, it's much much easier to hit it. Why? Because you use it first ability and then you have one more you have to use it one more time and it instantly stuns if you dash to a minion and then you use your double charge of your third ability enemies are gonna have a lot of time to react because they can clearly see hey this guy is trying to stun me right so i really recommend you to watch my full irelia guide where i explain every single combo you can do with irelia before even remotely getting into irelia 
learn the combos in practice mode and get into the game. Because, like, as I said, I don't know what happened this game. But, like, normally it doesn't go like this. I, I have no idea how I suddenly, be, like, you're just gonna have to see the later stages of the game. I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. Like, normally this won't happen. It's really gonna take you a hell of a lot of practice to play Aurelia properly. Because she has so many combos. So many different combos that work at different scenarios. Which I'm not gonna all explain today during this video. This should be a double kill. Lee Sin ult. Okay, I flashed here just to hit both of them. You see that combo that I did right there? What I did there... What I did there... Here I'm gonna block the third shot damage and my second ability. That's another thing that you can do. But what I did there is I just flashed to hit both of them with the slows. So they couldn't, you know, they couldn't escape anymore. When you hit that ultimate, of course, you're gonna be able to hit your first ability for free. And then I stunned them. Another quick tip I have for you guys. This is a bit of a, more of a beginner tip. I mean, it, it is an advanced tip, but Irelia is so hard to play that it, there are, you know... How, how can I say this? Let me just give you the tips and stop talking. After you ult, you can hit your third ability for free. You can hit your third ability for free. But don't hit it immediately. Let me say it like this. You ult, you ult Draven. You use your first ability immediately to jump on him. And then you can stun him for free. Make sure you instantly stun him, however. Like, after you ult, you can auto-aim your third ability, and it hits. Unless, of course, the enemy flashes out of it, but you know what I mean, right? After you ult, first ability and instant third ability. A more advanced combo is, you use your third ability first, then you ult, first ability, and then you stun them again with that third ability, and they will not see that one coming. The second one is more advanced and much better, but it's harder to pull off. I'm just killing him for free here. Ooh, he actually... Ooh, that was beautifully played by the Master Yi. I was waiting for him to stun him, but he actually didn't fall for the bait. He didn't use his... Uh, yeah, that was beautifully played. You can clearly see the enemies have five people. My Graves is AFK in bot lane. He'll be AFK up until the very late game. And of course, we have a trolling Soraka. So, Master Yi just outplayed me there. I was waiting for him because if he dodges my stun, he just kills me. So, he just, he just outplayed me. Master Yi is really good into Aurelia, by the way. Because Master Yi can dodge all your stuff. Like, that's the type of champion you really have to be careful of. Also, he doesn't get affected by your ultimate. Because his ultimate gives him reduction. There you go. I did it again, you see? I did the same combo again, and Draven is left helpless. Because he's, you know, I get him into my range of danger. And I kill him, easily. He can never stay alone like that. Even if he's under his turret, I'm just gonna kill him. Like, I'm just straight up gonna kill him. Because my ultimate, he cannot escape. He cannot escape Irelia. That is the beauty of this champion. Enemies cannot escape around. Like, I could potentially even just dive this Thresh if I wanted to. I'm walking outside of the turret range here. Like, oh, here you go. Boom, 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 and boom. Easy kill. See that? That's what Irelia can do. He screwed up, so I just went on him immediately. I'm lucky that I have a Yumi, by the way. Because, of course, Yumi can allow me to, like, 1 versus 9 this game. Because Graves is pretty much AFK as well, this game, up until the very, very late game. Soraka is literally AFK. I mean, the guy is trolling. And I am just, you know, me and Yumi are just doing our thing. Like, we're just doing our thing. I'm gonna try to help the Graves here, because he's really struggling in his lane. I am the only one who has got kills in this game, by the way, just so you know. I mean, I'm gonna reach him anyways. And he's dead. Boom, there we go. He couldn't escape. If he would have gone for the lantern, I would have flashed for him. So I would catch him up. And I wouldn't follow him because they changed Aurelia's first ability. But I would have killed him anyways. The damage would have been enough. Ooh, he touched it beautifully. Uh, oh, Lee Sin kicked him out of my ultimate. You see what happened there? At this point, Draven is just really weak. He cannot do anything to me. Like, I can just dive on him and just kill him with my basic attacks. Make sure you get to 4 stacks when you play Aurelia, by the way. You can see the stacks under your health bar, because after the 4th stack, you're gonna do even more on-hit damage. It gives you magic damage on-hit. This is why I keep telling you guys, you know, the on-hit stuff is so important. And what is even more important is, you, is for you to not waste your first ability. Like, you should really not use your first ability uh, if it doesn't get reset. -ed. Your first ability gets reset when you kill an enemy, or a minion, or anything like that. Or when you proc one of your stacks, you can apply a stack on the enemy by hitting them with your third ability or by hitting them with your ultimate. The only reason you should use your first ability without a stack and without killing an enemy 
is if you can kill an enemy for free after it. So, like, for example, I could use it to dive on the Draven. I mean, he's... Like, I stunned him, boom, and boom. I didn't even have to do it here. Like, here I'm going to use it on the Thresh. Look, even, even though it doesn't reset my... Um, even though it doesn't reset it, because I killed him, right? Like, here again, I used it here to maintain my stacks. That is another reason to maintain your stacks. They're not going to kill me. You can see your stacks here, look. When this timer runs out, now it takes away your stacks. So you have to have your eyes on those stacks. Like, as a last resort, you can waste your first ability just to maintain the stacks. You know what I mean? So, like, if you're chasing an enemy and you have your fourth stack is running out, you can actually waste your first ability by putting it on a cooldown to maintain your stacks. This is also why I completely avoided playing Aurelia because this is way too advanced. I know that half of you guys that are watching this, maybe even 70%, have no idea what I'm talking about. But this is, if you want to get into Aurelia, guys, this is it. This is what you have to learn. This is what you have to do. Otherwise, you're never going to succeed with the chip. Look, I'm probably going to do the combo again. First ability, I strun him, but I missed it. You can clearly see how hard it is to hit. Clearly. Like, clearly I can't just hit it easily, right? It's not an easy champion, this, this champion. Ooh, if he hit me, they could have potentially killed me. Actually, no, I would, I would have just killed both of them, now that I'm thinking about it. I could have probably just killed both of them here. I just didn't want to get ulted by Yasuo, to be honest. And Yumi was not on top of me, so... You know, of course, I'm waiting for the Yumi. No fight. I'm gonna ult him, boom. Stun, first ability, and another first ability. Clean. This is clean. You see that? I killed him, and my first ability was off cooldown. Clean. These are clean combos with Aurelia. You really have to be clean with this champion to work. Because if you can literally screw up one thing, and it's gonna cost you everything. You screw up one thing, and it costs you everything. So here I screwed up. Look. Now I have to flash and ignite him. See? I screwed up again, actually. But my stun was beautiful, so it saved my ass. Hey, Soraka's healing me. Look, Soraka's finally doing something. Look, look. Soraka's actually healing me. There we go, Soraka. She has no items, but she's healing me. Hey, look at this. What I'm doing here is I was not initially helping my Lee Sin because I wanted to catch them off. But then I realized we literally don't have a teammate. Soraka is like 8k, so I have to help him. It would have been much better if we had someone else help the Lee Sin take the dragon. I would wait in the bush and get a kill for free. That's another thing with the relay. You can just wait in bushes and get kills for free. Because your ultimate, you know, it slows the enemies like crazy. They can't escape. They just can't escape it. As I said, Graves has been AFK the entire game. He's 0-5. Yeah, he's 0-5. He's just AFK. So, there's gonna be 5 enemies here. We cannot contest this. Like, I'm not gonna... I'm probably not gonna tr even try to contest this. It's just an L. Sometimes you have to take Ls in the game. This is one of them. We give them Herald. It's a whatever. We lose mid lane for it, probably. Whatever. Like, what else am I supposed to do? I have no mid laner. I have no top laner. I can't 1v9 like that. I mean, I can, but it's just too risky. It makes no sense. I saw someone in the bot lane, but that someone went back, unfortunately. So I'm just going to push the wave. Basically, I'm just trying to high perform myself as much as I can. You know, getting myself as ahead as possible so they can't, so they can't make a comeback. Because the later we get into this game, the worse it becomes for us. Because we are essentially 3 versus 5. You know, if the Graves gets fed somehow because he's com constantly split pushing, we are 4 versus 5. But you have to keep it on. When you're 4 versus 5, you have to push like crazy. As in, like, you really have to try to push your advantage. Because the later the game goes, the worse it is for you. Because if the enemy starts to get a lot of gold, it's going to be a 5 versus 4. And, you know, and it's equal. Because, like, now it's not equal because I'm super ahead. But, like, I can't sit still. I can't just farm all the time. I really have to be proactive. And Irelia can be proactive. Like, let me just say it like that. Whenever you have your flash, you want to fight as an Irelia. Even if you don't have your flash. But because the reason that you want to fight... Oh, I tried it again. Oh, if I hit it, I would have killed him. It's just so hard to hit that combo. Like, it's way harder than it looks. Oh, look at Graves. He's actually putting up a good fight. Look, look, look. He's putting up a good fight. All that sideway farming. Now he's putting up a good fight. Oh, you see that disgusting flash that I did on Draven? Ooh, you see that? And I escaped. The stasis was perfect, so the turret wouldn't hit me. And they wouldn't stun me under the turret. This was, yet again, played 
perfectly. It could not have been better than that. I could kill him maybe. I'm just using the minions to heal up with my first ability. Turret for free as well. Like flash ulting is the best combo you can do with Irelia. Just so you know. Because enemies won't see it coming. Very, very good combo. You can do it and you can one-shot enemies. Like Draven or any other ADC really has no chance against this combo. Like you just hit it on them. They're slowed. You hit your first ability. Third ability. Another first ability. And then you have another first ability. Any ADC is going to die like that. Literally any ADC. It's... it's like No ADC is going to survive that. Even if you're behind as an Irelia, if you hit that combo, you know, he, they're just going to die. Let's see what happens here. I can stun him. I missed. I missed. You can... You can clearly see how it screws me up a little bit. Yet again, this was a mistake, you see? Using my first ability on the Thresh like that is a mistake. I should have stunned him and then used my third ability. There's like so many micro mistakes that you can make when you play Aurelia. And like these micro mistakes will cost you games. So it's like even though I'm playing out of my mind, I gotta be honest, right? I am making mistakes. I'm definitely making mistakes right here, clearly. Because that right there, you know, I could have potentially killed the Thresh if I didn't just randomly use my first ability on him like that. Ultimate? Ultimate is on- yeah, ultimate is off cooldown. I am looking for kills here. Because I know we're not gonna be able to do Baron, unless I kill all of them. I'm just waiting for one of them. So I go on the Master Yi. I did stun him. I killed him, finally. Let's see, I hit him, I kill him, I stun the Thresh, first ability, another first ability, just to finish him off, and I killed them all. We cannot do Baron, because Lee Sin is dead, so I'm just gonna go back. Again, this is not ideal, Lee Sin needs to stay alive, because somehow, some way, we need to do the Baron. Like, somehow, some way, we need to be able to do the Baron. But that's gonna be a little bit of a problem this game, because sure, I can kill them, but like, if we cannot do anything with it, what does it help? Third ability, I missed, I, I misclicked it, I completely misclicked it. You can see how little damage I'm doing if I fail, right? The only reason I'm still able to kill him is because I'm so ahead in this game. Draven is in top lane, okay? I killed Yasuo, should be a free Baron, it should be. Four of us can take this Baron. Of course, Graves doesn't help us, because why would Graves help us, right? He has many better things to do in the side lane. But there he goes, there he is. We still can't really do this. We just have no damage. We have no damage to do this. I, again, the flash combo. He cannot do anything against it. I can stasis. And there you go. The stasis saved my ass right there, you see? I even still had my second ability ready. Again, we cannot do this. Even though we killed Thresh, we cannot do this. Normally, this would be a free Baron, but not in this game. This is a bit of a special case. If Draven stays, I'm just gonna kill him for free. Seems seems that he's going back. Ooh, I think he was in the bush actually. Why did I not try to go for the bush? I feel like he was backporting in the bush. Damn. Maybe I could have killed him. I have my ultimate. If anyone shows up, I'm just gonna straight up ult. Oh, there's Draven. There's Draven, guys. I'm gonna ult him. And Draven is dead. He actually flashes away. So I just killed Malphite. Because he flashed away. Using the Yumi heals. Look at that healing. Crazy. Four of them are on the bot lane. I really want to get this Wits end. It's going to increase my damage like crazy. I am pushing, however, because if one of them rotates, you guys know what, I, what it means. I am going to kill him, right? I'm going to take this turret and I'm going to kill him. If two of them rotate, I'm going to kill both of them. And I, I can see that because at least three of them are in the bot lane, you see? So that's why I'm continuously pushing him. Master Yi is not going to 1v1 me. 1v2, sorry, because there's a Yumi on top of me. Now I have a choice. I can either rotate to bot lane. It seems like Graves is holding his ground, actually. Look at Graves. Oh. Graves, guys, there we go. He sacrificed the entire early and mid game and let me carry everyone on our backs for him to finally get a triple kill. Let's go. 
<laughs> now, like, we cannot do Baron again because Lee Sin is dead. You see how stupid that is? Like, this, this game seems like an easy win, but it really isn't because, of course, the Soraka is trolling. It's really annoying. I'm full built now, so I'm not gonna take any other farm. Ah, of course. of course, he just pushes like an idiot and dies. Of course. Now it means we still cannot get the Baron because our master or our uh, Graves is dead. I am full built, however, so I'm gonna have some fun. We're waiting again. I don't really want to go on Master Yi because he has a Guardian Angel. I want to go on this Draven or Thresh or Malphite. That's a free kill. Boom. Stunt. He he flashes away, so I just use my first ability. Like, no one can run away from Aurelia. I keep saying this. No one can run away from Aurelia because your first ability has a bigger range than flash. So as long as you're on top of the enemy, they can't flash away because you'll follow them with your first ability. Like, this is why I always say no one can ever escape from Aurelia because she can just follow up with your first ability. It's, it's the beauty of this champion. That is the beauty of this champion. And that is why it feels unfair when you play against a good Aurelia. Because a good Aurelia is always going to do that, right? A good Aurelia is always going to follow you up anyways. Again, I know the change they did to Aurelia. I know you cannot, like, if, if the enemy flashes while you're using your first ability on them, you don't follow them, but you're still going to reset it. And you can follow them afterwards. Like, that's the beauty of this champion. Okay, the right move here is to take bot lane, to push bot lane, but I know my team is incapable of thinking, so I am sacrificing a bot lane turret. Ooh, that was close. I'm sacrificing our bot lane turret just to be here with my team. Because if all three of them died here, we would have lost the Elder Dragon, and we would have lost the game. So again, I sacrificed the bot lane turret on purpose. It's like playing chess, right? Sometimes you have to sacrifice pieces. I sacrificed it because I know in this particular chess game, my team is incapable. There he's gonna ult me. I know it. He's gonna follow up. I can I can use my second ability here to tank. Look at this. Look at this. Look at Aurelia, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, baby. It's gonna be a pentakill. <laughs> and of course, they FF the game. 25 kills. You'll see. You'll see. Don't leave the video yet. Don't leave the video yet. 25 kills. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Better than 100% of Aurelia players in Challenger. Huh? Me? Me? Me who never plays Aurelia? It just happened this game. It just happened. It just happened. What can I say? It just happened. Make sure you give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.